In this video, we will try to understand sorption desorption isotherm. If we already understand the concept of water activity and moisture content and how do they differ from each other, let us then proceed to the discussion of relationship between them. For foods, the relationship between moisture content and water activity do not appear to be linear and the relationship can be represented through isotherms. Isotherms is the graphical representation of relationship between water content and water activity or of equilibrium relative humidity. The graph of equilibrium moisture content of a material versus relative humidity of the environment at a given temperature is referred to as sorption or desorption isotherms. A graphical plot of the equilibrium states between the product partial pressure which is dependent upon the water content and the ambient air for a specific temperature produces sorption isotherm which consequently describes a product sorption behavior. Sorption isotherms can be generated from either desorption or adsorption process which also refers to description of sorption behavior. To define each, adsorption is the water taken by a dry material and desorption is the water removed from a moist material. The difference between them is greatest at lower temperature from 5 degrees Celsius and not detectable at higher temperature from 60 degrees Celsius. The difference between these curves is defined as hysteresis or the loop from the graph. The most favored proposed explanation is based on cellulosic materials wherein it was explained that rehydration will never be as complete as original hydration and that for any given relative vapor pressure, the material shows a higher moisture content along the desorption curve than it does along the adsorption curve. The graph first showed was desorption behavior in relation to relative humidity, but it can also be in terms of water activity since there is also a relationship between moisture content and water activity. From the graph of sorption isotherm, we can say that the x-axis can also be represented as the water activity since relative humidity is also the equilibrium relative humidity. This is also because the water held by materials are not only dependent upon the equilibrium relative vapor pressure but is also dependent upon the direction from which equilibrium is approached, which can be if the material is being dried or wetted. These sorption isotherms are also classified according to their shape and processes. For type 1, the Langmuir and or similar isotherms, this type present a characteristic increase in water activity related to the increasing moisture content. The first derivative of this plot increases with moisture content and the curves are convex upwards. For type 2 or the sigmoidal sorption isotherm, this is the type in which the curves are concave upwards. It takes into account the existence of multi-layers at the internal surface of a material. For type 3, known as Flory Hagen's isotherm, it is the type which accounts for a solvent or plasticizer such as glycerol above the glass transition temperature. For type 4, it is the type which describes the adsorption of a swallowable hydrophilic solid until a maximum of site hydration is reached. And type 5, the Brunner Emmett Teller or Bat Multilayer Adsorption Isotherm, it is the one observed in the adsorption of water vapor on charcoal and it is related to the isotherms type 2 and 3. Among these types, type 2 and 4 are the isotherms most frequently found in food products. Isotherms also has regions and with focus on the type mostly found in foods, the regions are divided into three. For region 1, the bound water or monolayer region which corresponds to absorption of up to a monomolecular layer of water, the completion of this region occurs very close to the inflection point of the curve. In this region, water activity and moisture content are both low. Water molecules are also held tightly by the food, making them have limited mobility. For region 2, the intermediate water or multilayer region, this corresponds to adsorption of additional layers of water over the monolayer. In this region, moisture content is still relatively low but water activity increases more. Water molecules interact with food with some mobility. For region 3, free water or capillary absorption region, this is the region which refers to the water held in the pores of the material. In this region, both moisture content and water activity are high and water molecules are more free with high mobility. The moisture sorption behavior of a food undergoes different stages, and in theory, the course of water sorption of a dry material undergoes the following stages. Stage 1 is the formation of monolayer. 
This is the initial phase where the material rapidly takes up moisture when exposed to a humid environment. The rate of adsorption is relatively high during this stage. The second stage is the stage of multilayer adsorption. Following the initial phase, there is a period of slower and more constant absorption. During this stage, the material continues to absorb moisture but at a steadier rate. The process is not as rapid as in the initial stage. Stage 3 is the stage of equilibrium or the stage of uptake into pores and capillary spaces, dissolution of solutes, and entrapment of water at higher levels of water activity. As the material interact with its environment, it tends to reach a state where the different mechanisms such as uptake into pores, dissolution, and entrapment of water are in balance. Eventually, the material reaches a point where the rate of moisture adsorption equals the rate of moisture desorption. At this point, the material is considered to be at equilibrium with its surroundings in terms of moisture content. Understanding and characterizing these sorption processes within foods are essential for predicting how will they behave in different humidity conditions. Additionally, it will help in designing storage or processing conditions for producing good quality products.